everyone and welcome back to my channel and actually welcome to my craft room. Uh, I figured I'd, I'd film this a little bit. I have some time today. This is the weekend and I'm just getting ready to do some more crafting. I wanted to work on my junk journal that I keep trying to work on, but I keep having other things happen that I have to do. So I'm really excited today to just be down in my craft room working on my journal and, but I'm thinking about having to clean all this stuff up. And I'm just curious if any of you have to have everything cleaned up before you can go on to the next project. I know that's kind of a debate that goes on throughout the crafting community. Uh, does it bother you to have all your stuff out? And, or do you like to start with a clean slate when you start a new project? In my situation, I, this is kind of, this is, I'll show you what I've been doing over here. This is kind of my card making area. And I just finished, I had part two of my uh, video that I did making collage cards with the Market Square, uh, Maggie Holmes Market Square embellishment pack. And I still have all my stuff out from that. And I also have some things out. I just did a, another video that I'm going to be releasing next week on how to line up your wooden stamps and position them correctly onto your cardstock so that you get them straight and get them where you want them on the cardstock. And I have um, this tool that I'm using that I can show you how to how to do that. And so I've got <laughs> that going on too. Um, I've got my tape. I just got done sending an Etsy order today. So I've got all my shipping tape that I use to kind of wrap everything up. And then over back here, I've got, <laughs> this is what happens. So when I go to film a video, I'll kind of give you a little background. I have, this is my, where I, where I film right here. So I did, I was using the, the Wendy Becky uh, stamp positioner tool to do the most recent video. And what I do when I film is I normally have this glass mat um, this we are memory keepers. We are memory keepers. Large glass mat that I use when I'm doing just projects when I'm not filming because it's great. It, you can get stuff all over it and it wipes clean. And I like to keep my my regular craft mat fairly clean because I do use it for taking video. So I take the glass mat off and I have this craft mat up when I'm filming. Plus, there's no glare because you get the glare with the glass. So. Um, this is helpful too. So this is kind of my my filming area here. And so when I do this, I usually make a huge mess over on the side with all the stuff I've been using. So I throw my Misty that I use when I'm stamping and I have my, my paper cutter over here just kind of thrown on top of everything. Drawers are open. Everything's a mess. Um, I still have to put these wooden stamps away too that I, I just got. So so this is kind of what it looks like. This is the after, after I get done filming a video. But, you know, leave me a comment if you if you like to have a clean craft room before you start a new project or if you just don't care and you want to just just keep keep going when you have the time. So in my case, I don't know. I may clean it up because I've got some time today. I have a couple of podcasts I'm listening to, too, that I haven't had a chance to get to. I like to listen to Pam at the Paper Outpost. She actually, she's got a ton of YouTube videos, too. And she's great. She, she makes junk journals, but I really like her podcasts. But I find I can't listen to a podcast and create at the same time. I can listen to music, but just not a podcast because I'm not, I can't hear what they're saying because I'm focusing on my project. So I like to listen to podcasts when I'm cleaning up and that way I can take everything in, but I don't really have to think much about when I'm cleaning up. So, so I've got two in the queue from Pam that I'm going to be listening to. So I don't know. I may, I may just clean up for a little bit and then, then start, start my junk journal. So this is as far as I've gotten with my journal. I've, I've got my, I'm starting to choose my papers. So I have the cover done, which I've shown multi, multiple times. <laughs> I got everything. Um, actually, I may not have shown the, the little trim that I added. I think I didn't show that. So I ended up finding this trim. This was actually I got from a thrift shop and it was this big bag of trim and it matched this perfectly. So I love this, this fabric I got from Joann's. It was just a little, um, little fat quarter uh, thing of fabric. I got this and then I covered the, the inside with this uh, reddish paper, which I don't know. I think this was just kind of random I had in my uh, 
12 by 12 paper. So this matched really well with this. I didn't want anything too busy to compete with this pattern here. So um, I thought this went really well. And then I added this little blue trim from the thrift store bag. And I thought that looked really cute. And then the front has two different trims. Well, the front and back have two different trims. So I had this trim, this was also a thrift store find, but I didn't have enough of this to put on the back, so I just put this little pom-pom trim and some gingham ribbon, which I thought looked good too. So, so that's all set to go. And then I've got my, my signatures all put together, um, like the scrapbook papers that I chose. So I've got these, I have a lot of October, actually, I think it's all October afternoon that I'm using for my signatures. I really like this color combination, the oranges and the reds. I'm kind of having a, it, it's a, the cover is my word book. So I'm going to have kind of a library theme or a book theme, but then I also want to have just my usual kind of um, 60s and 70s vintage pieces in there too. Um, so I'm going to kind of I always wait till the end to pick my embellishments and stuff. So I'm kind of just picking pages right now. I've got some, some of this paper. Uh, it's just like some memo sheets from that I found at the at a, uh, antique mall actually. Um, and this got a really nice feel to it. It's kind of like a, not onion skin, but it's a little bit thicker than that, but I really like the feel of it. And I love the, the design on it too. The green kind of goes with the journal. Um, and then I've got a couple other sheets of paper I chose. I think I have to get some more, I think. And then I actually, I got an order from Etsy. This is from the Vintage Paper Market. And I shop there a lot because she has a lot of really cute things and a lot of different things that I can't ever find anywhere. So I was looking for some items to put in this particular journal that kind of had the same color scheme. So I found she had had these on Instagram and I found these little, uh, they're called Tick, Tickladex multifunction calendar cards. And I thought these were so cute. They're perfect bright colors that would go really well in the journal. So I'm going to use probably a couple of these in the journal and then just some other really cute things from there. These are some just like note, note pages from places that you visit. So you can kind of keep track of, uh, just your, your trips and that kind of thing. Um, what else here? Oh, these bookmarks are cute. These are from the 80s. I just thought these would be fun too. I love anything, anything 80s. I just think it's so cute. So I got some of those. Um, more of these. I, I like these envelopes for hair nuts. I have a set that I found at an antique mall, but I'm just collecting them from other places because it's hard to find them. And these are so perfect for junk journals. The, the envelope size is the perfect size and it just has a great, has great graphics on the front. So I got a few of those too. And then I picked up one of her, she has like a little, like a little collection set. I forget what this one was called, but I liked the, let me get the glare off of this with the plastic. Uh, it was just like these, little ladies with kind of a, a blue theme and it's just like a little bit of everything so I thought that's always fun to have on hand just like little bits and pieces of things so I'm going to add probably some of those to the journal too because the blue kind of goes along with it so so I'm going to work on that today um what else oh I got my I just joined the Spellbinders Embossing Folder of the Month Club I was in a couple of their other clubs just to kind of try them out and I found I wasn't using as much of the this, this stuff as quickly as I wanted to. So I thought just, I like the idea of just, you get like one thing a month and it's just something that you know you're gonna use. And I love embossing folders. I've talked about that a lot. Um, actually, I think I have a, yeah, I have a video on organizing your embossing folders, which I may have to update because <laughs> their embossing folders are bigger now which I really like because sometimes, I don't know if you have the issue where your embossing folder doesn't fill up the whole piece of cardstock. So these are nice. They're, I'm not sure how big they are if it says, oh, five and a half by eight and a half inches. So these are really big and you could 
you know, cut a really or emboss a really large piece of cardstock and then use it a couple times or use parts of it. So I don't know. I think that's a really good idea and it fits through the the uh, Sizzix machine just fine and everything. Um, but this one is called Garden Path and I had seen this on Instagram too and I just love the floral pattern. It's kind of a it's a large pattern, a variety of different kind of flowers. And I don't know, I think it'll be really fun to use. So I'm, I've got this, it's, and it's very inexpensive. And you just get one embossing folder a month. So I'm excited to see what next month says. Because um, I, I really like, I love using embossing folders. I love just that extra texture it gives you um, for the layer, you know, background of a card or something. And also for junk journals, because you could run, and actually this being so large, you could have a whole page of even like vellum or something and put it through this and have kind of that crinkly feel with the texture on it in a junk journal. So that'd be good with the, with a larger folder. So I'm don't have much to clean up over here. I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna start kind of adding more pages and figuring out, uh, I gotta figure out how to put my signatures in here. The size is a little bit bigger on this particular, uh, journal cover. So I'm going to make sure I get that measured correctly. I took a class from Kitty Witty Papercraft. She shows really great ways to measure uh, your, your, your journal so you can get the signature in there. She works with a kind of a, I think a two and a half inch spine or something, but the, the class is really helpful because it kind of gives you the basics and then you can kind of go on with it and, um, you know, kind of put your own spin on it or whatever. So so I'm gonna get going on that. Over here, I just have some other things to clean up. I have this, I think I may have talked about this in the newsletter. I just ordered this, with, to go along with the, the journal making, I ordered this guillotine cutter and I, I like it. It's from Swingline, I got it just off of Amazon. And I, I decided I really needed one. I have a mini one from We Are Memory Keepers. And when I'm cutting, pages for a journal I was having to cut one like one at a time and because I was using my um, other trimmer it was like the slide trimmer and you can't cut more than one or two pages with that so I decided I really needed a guillotine trimmer to kind of trim off the extra edges you get on the junk journals to kind of even everything out plus just to make it quicker when you're cutting the pages so I picked this one up um, I was actually looking for the We Are Memory Keepers one. They have a 12 inch one. I like it because it has the plastic piece over here that you can kind of hold on to and you put your paper in and it it kind of protects your hand a little better. And But it wasn't available. And then I just looked and now it's I see it everywhere. So I had some points over it, a cherry on top, and I just placed an order for that. So it's going to be coming in a week or so. Um, but I still do have this one. So I'm going to actually do a comparison and kind of see which one I like better. The thing about this one is self-sharpening, which I like that idea. So I don't know. I, I mean, it's not going to hurt to have both. This was not that expensive. So, um, so I think it'll be fine. But I also, I, I like the measurements on the We Are Memory Keepers one too. You can, they're really, the background is a white background or an off-white background and you can really see the numbers really well. So I kind of like that too. So it's, easy to measure, but I don't know. We'll see when, once I get it, I'm not sure when it's going to be arriving, but, and then this is just, I was just cleaning up from my, um, I did some embossing in my last couple of my two videos ago that I just made. So I just put this stuff away. So I think I've shown this drawer before. This is all my, my embossing powder. And this, this is, I haven't changed this in years. This actually works really well for me. I've got everything right here and I don't like, I don't, buy a ton of embossing powder anymore because I have it lasts so long but I do run out of the basics like the the clear and the, the whites and um let's see I'm trying to like the holographic one I run out of because I use that a lot so I pick those up but I have a lot of the, the different colors too that I like so so I've got that in there and I think that's about it I'm just got oh and I've got some <laughs> When I, I have, it's nice to have a sink here and I just cleaned off. This is the stamp I used for my video when I was making the collage cards. This is the Pink Fresh Studio one. So I was, I was cleaning this off. Uh, it's such a big stamp. It's hard to, to clean. So I just use soap and water and some of this, um, this spray from Ranger. It smells like bubble gum, but I like it 
to uh, get the ink off your stamps. It works really well. And it works well with, uh, I have this too, that I'll use for my stamps. It's a stamp scrubber. This I got from Paper Tray Ink a long time ago, but it's got a part where you spray the, the stamp cleaner, you rub off the stamp, and then you can dry it on the other side. And this works really well too. So, so that's, these are all, this is dried and ready to get put away too. So I'll probably clean up all my card stuff and then get going on my journal. So I think that's all the stuff I have to show today. And I might, I might do a few more of these a month, the, the just in my craft room videos, just to kind of see, cause I'm always curious about people's crafting process. Um, just, you know, when they get the time, what they do first or what they, you know, like if they want to clean up first. Um, and just like what people like to do. It's just fun. I mean, we our craft rooms are, a fun place to be and it's kind of a relaxing place and we've got kind of bad weather going on right now so so it's nice to be down and just doing doing crafts and doing things we like so so I'll probably do these maybe more than I was doing them about once a month but I may do them more a couple times a month because it seems like everybody really enjoys them so so and as always let me know if there's any videos you'd like to see about crafting anything in particular any tools you'd like to see me try or if I have them and, and I haven't talked about them, you know, that you'd want to know about or any other types of organizing, um, just leave me a comment below and I can um, see what I can do for that. So I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you do some crafting yourself and I will see you in my next video.